for that itch. Rarely do I see any American Italians eating in here. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. Willkommen to your life. Yes! Yes! Hey there, welcome to Real Genius. I'm Chris Wagner, culture critic for the Dallas Morning News. I'm Robert Wolanski, and apparently uh, I should be moving out of Dallas, according to my emails lately. I gotta read your emails someday to pick me up. And I, I'm, I'm the Antichrist, and it's time to move. Uh, good times. I'm sorry to hear that. We'll, we'll miss you very much. Uh, Maria Bamford is a comedian who I feel like I should She's a know, comedian of comedy. I feel like I should know more about her because um, we are talking about the new Netflix show, Lady Dynamite, which she is the star of, and it's based on her life and her routines and her honesty and exploring her own mental um, illness. bipolarity in her comedy. OCD, bipolar, yes. mental illness. And this is just a funny show. It's and it, It's funny in a really kind of raw, but still very goofy way. At this, it manages to be really silly and just really close to the bone at the same time. Reminds me a tiny bit of um, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, but I actually like it a lot more. I think it's much different, much better, much more honest, much more real. Should we look at it first? Yeah, let's Because it's hard to describe. Look at a clip. So here's a clip from the most ironically named television show ever, Lady Dynamite. <laughs> Good morning, Blossom. I love you so much. Good morning, Bird. I love you so much. You guys, Karen Grisham was right. I do feel better now that I'm off my meds. I feel supercharged. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about Graham. I'm pushing down my feelings thanks to you guys. I don't need drugs because I got puggers. in the fridge because there's a secret in there and don't forget that we have our lady spa day you and me in the sink together okay happy birthday blossom i'll see you later bye 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 i love you see you soon guys robert don't do drugs do pugs pugs not drugs yes yes precisely um so this is based on her life trajectory and her career. And it takes place three different times. There's mm -hmm. the present in Los Angeles where she's navigating a very, uh, what would you say, abrasive and funny version of Hollywood culture right. and the work world. Um, Trying to get her career back on track after right. her stint in the um, a mental, mental institution. institution. Um, there's the past in which, kind of before her breakdown, um, in which you know, Maria Bamford herself was a Target spokeswoman, and here she's a spokeswoman for a, a uh, anti, very anti-labor company called Checklist. Right. Um, and then there's Duluth, where she is actually from, where Maria Bamford is from, right. um, in which she is staying with her parents, uh, played very funnily by uh, Ed Bagley Jr. and Mary Kay Place, as she's getting her feet back under her. Extraordinary. Um, I like the present stuff the best um, because I really love um, the guy who plays her agent, uh, Fred Melamed, is hilarious. I just watched him again the other night in A Simple Man. And he's, you know what else he's very funny in? He's very funny in In a World. Right. Because he's got that voice. Right. And it's great because she is playing one of her, one of the things she does in real life as well as voice actress. Right. There's all kinds of little interesting Well, and the whole thing ties together. You get Pat Oswalt who shows up uh, very early on trying to figure out with her how to stay, how to, how, to, yes. how, to, how to sort of stage and set up the series. Some serious fourth it's wall. It's very meta. Breaking, yeah. But she, you know, I first was really introduced to her in Comedians of Comedy with Pat Oswalt, Zach Galifianakis. Uh, saw them perform at South by Southwest several years ago. Um, sort of this dead, this generation of deadpan humorists uh, who were sort of making fun of the fact that they were making fun of things in them, their own lives, but were very autobiographical. It's probably the most autobiographical TV show that I can ever remember having seen. It's the most honest. It's very, for a show that's this hysterical, and I do think it's the funniest thing I can remember seeing on TV in a very long time. I was laughing out loud at my desk earlier today as I was watching it. I, was, I watched uh, an episode a, couple, a week ago, I guess, two weeks ago whenever it debuted, and then I went back and watched a few others. And I have to say, I've never laughed that hard at anything 
while feeling also wildly uncomfortable. Because you do realize that this is very much her life. Um, the target, if you go back and look at those target ads, which she put online, um, and then think about sort of what happened to her afterwards and how that's represented in this show, it's kind of extraordinary because they did not look pleasant. Um, she looked unhinged in those target ads, and that's what they wanted from her. But at the same time, what they got out of her was something sort of difficult, something that I'm not sure made you really want to shop at Target. <laughs> You certainly don't want to shop there now after you watch this show. I believe hypomania is what she was right. diagnosed with. And it's not its not just very brave, I think, this yeah. show. It's taking um, her, her mental illness and turning it into something that can speak to a big audience yeah. and can also speak to people who know um, what she's been through. And that's a tough thing to do, and she's really mining her life um, for, as you, with both of us said, a really very funny show and sometimes a very uncomfortable show. Well, she makes it very relatable. Um, anytime you can take something that people think is difficult, something that has been stigmatized, something that people are uncomfortable discussing, and make it this relatable and this hilarious, I think is um, it's an extraordinary achievement. I mean, this is really, I think, one of the most important and I hate to say important when you uh, apply it to something with pugs, not drugs, or uh, it, pugs are very or the pea noodles. Uh, uh, the, the, this thing is full of these little jokes, these little asides that, that just sort of go nowhere, but leave you just. Yeah, I, had, I had to go. I had to go back and rewind it just because I couldn't hear things over my own laughter. Yeah. Um, to and I think it's important because it, it is able to do all of that. It's able to make you just laugh but it's also able to take something and strip the stigma from it and make you go oh it's something that people deal with and is treatable and is something that they have to reconcile with their entire lives and I realized about halfway through the second episode that I'm probably way more like her than I realized there's some some great pedigree too in the the creators of the show Mitchell Hurwitz creator of the rest of development Pam Brady, one of the main forces behind South Park. Mm -hmm. And you can see sensibilities from both of those shows. Right, it's really the rest of development means Team America. Yeah, and it's, and it's got, I think the way that it reminded me most of Kimmy Schmidt, as I mentioned earlier, is the pace. Mm -hmm. It's a screwball comedy um, set in this very specific world with these very specific people, it's including- It's also like Pee Wee, too. Yeah, and it's a little bit, little bit, like, little bit like Pee Wee. Right. Uh, Mira Servino shows up playing herself, right. uh, the Lucas Brothers, twin comedians, very funny, they show up. They're in 22 Jump Street. Uh, playing themselves. You mentioned that Patton Oswalt kind of plays himself, but he's also playing a cop right. who lives in the neighborhood. But who's really Patton but who's Oswalt. who's really Patton Oswalt. It's, it's that kind of show. It, like, it likes bending and blurring those lines. It's the kind of show that, as far as I'm concerned, should win an Emmy, a Nobel, and a Humanities wow. Prize. You're, you're tripling down. I think it's just about the greatest thing. If, if you don't have Netflix, for whatever reason, this is the, you should get it just for this. It's do, you, do you think some viewers may not quite know what to do with her? Sure. Or with it? And I don't, I don't and think I do. I mean, kind I'm, of I'm, like I'm, look at her energy and say, wow. But I'm familiar with her work and I still found there were moments where it was, you know, irritainment. Um, in the same way, in some ways, that Larry David will, could be the same way. Uh, it, it's too honest, it's too raw, it's too emotional. It's the it's, comedy of discomfort. It is, I, and I'm a huge sucker for the comedy of discomfort. I am too. And I think uh, we're, this scene that's playing uh, uh, right here with uh, her parents, I mean, it's, if you just hear the jo it, the jokes are funny, um, but the underlying, I mean, the fact that her parents are around and a big part of this show uh, not represented the way that Aziz Ansari's parents are in his show, uh, but actually playing themselves, but here they're sort of caricatures, um, I think is kind of amazing. I'd love to do a show where I had people playing my parents and I had big laughs at their expense while also sort of realizing at the same time that everything they do is out of nothing but tremendous love and, and trying to understand something that's very difficult. And the good news is because this is on Netflix, you can watch all of them immediately. And it's hard can, not to. Yeah, you can sit there. I'm not done with the whole thing, but I'm about halfway through. I'm trying to pace myself because it's a slow summer of bad TV. 
So I'm really trying to pace myself. But it's because I've had to go back and watch it, the pilot twice because I missed a lot. It's just funny. It's wonderful. It's great. She's the best thing in the world. Lady Dynamite on Netflix. Please check it out and check us out next week.